I was told that there is some technical thing and it was it is resolved now. Okay. Now, hope we can start the session, right? Okay. We'll continue with. Uh, I mean, we'll start taking off from the morning. Let me share the screen now. Okay, fine. So morning we had this. Let me load the data first. Okay. We had uh, this discussion in the morning. Now what we do is I'll take, we'll, we'll start with uh, presenting. We'll start with presenting. Uh, so far what we have discussed in the morning is a summary statistics, how to present the summary statistics in general with respect to categorical variable, okay, and in different versions. Now we try to use uh, those categorical information to build the cross tabulations, okay. The simple way is to do is that you can use table. Table is one function, table of LBD dollar LOW. LOW is a one categorical variable and I wish to build the class cross tabulation across <coughs> LBD and hypertension, low, I mean birth weight of the babies and the mother's habit of hypertension. So building that, giving enter, I'll get this. Okay, so this is the total uh, cross tabulation. This is the total cross tabulation where you can see, sorry, here you can see uh, the counts pertaining to each category. That means if the mother's birth is hypertension, then the babies, I mean, the number of babies who belong to the low birth weight are seven and no hypertension is normal weight is this thing. So if you, in general, uh, looking at the counts of the data, if mother doesn't have the habit of hypertension, okay, uh, sorry for, I mean, this, uh, uh, when mother doesn't have the problem of hypertension, then out of the 118 samples, majority sample uh, babies have possessed uh, this uh, normal weight, okay? Now, another way to define the same thing, but uh, with some different thing, is that using X tabs. X tabs is nothing but cross. Okay, X tabs uh, uh, build the cross tabulation using this thing. Okay, so two different methods. Okay, here the heading with the LBD dollar height will come, LBD with the dollar low will come. So this, this two different functions are available to generate this. Now the next thing is we need to obtain the proportions okay for which what we can do is let us take the thing prop dot table there is a function called you can see this prop dot table okay in that place this table lbd dollar low and lbd dollar high so once we do this we will get we will get the total proportions that means 7 out of 189 125 out of 189, 52 out of 189, 5 out of 189 is this, the total proportions. So further, what you can do, we can make a, a decimal value restriction, decimal value restriction uh, by taking, I want to have three decimals and uh, I can add that with a round function. Now see. But still, some more thing can be done that you can multiply this with 100 to convert that into percentages. Okay, so what we did first, we used the prop dot table as a function to obtain the overall proportions of these two categorical information. Then we tried to, tried to restrict the number of decimals because it is too long, around 8 to 7, 7 to 8 decimals have come. We can restrict this, but still, if you are not satisfied, you want to represent in terms of percentages, then what you can do is 
the proportions can be multiplied that 0.661 every cell proportion can be multiplied with 100 so that it will give us that 66 percent 66.1 percentage of uh, observations that where mother doesn't have hypertension and the baby weight belongs to the normal weight category so like this we can start describing the data next thing is if you want to have alone this uh, what we say the row proportions if you want to have alone this row proportions okay if you want to have alone this row proportion here first thing very simple to understand these too many braces are there let us simply understand this what we are trying to do here first thing is a table is prepared that we have seen right a table is prepared using the same thing next this proportion total table of this is taken here now you can see this okay but but before closing this okay before closing this here comma one is added comma one is nothing but row proportions okay and a round function is used so that we can restrict to two decimals okay and this can be multiplied by 100 okay what we have done two steps we have done i mean two things we have to take first you have to build the table then apply prop dot table function but before closing the prop dot table uh, you have to give one but comma is preferred is mandatory okay so this will generate the proportions of the row wise proportions but the decimals can be control restricted using the round function now this is what it will give us now see this okay decimals can be three you can have that fine okay now see this this is without 100 okay this is without 100 okay let us see with three decimals also fine now look at this portion look at this portion first this is the row wise proportions you can see this 0 0.119 plus 0 0.881 gives around one the row totals are one okay now this is 100 percentage now this shows a different scenario because it is a row percentage and this will tell that within normal weight if you see the second row with how to understand this is within the normal weight category Okay, there are there is 96.2 percentage observed where the mothers do not have hypertension. Okay, right. Now, what is the to total actually? What is the total? Yeah, out of 130, out of 130, 96.2 percentage of the babies of this normal weight category where their mother does not have the problem of hypertension okay now to overcome that to have a column proportion column proportion just to replace one here okay just to replace one by two just replace one by two now this will give us the column proportion why we have to do this row proportion and column proportion sometimes i wish to see that in each category of the birth weight low and normal uh, how, how much proportion is distributed across different categories in the column wise now here i am able to see pertaining to normal weight 96 per majority of the percentage belong to the mother's weight do not have hypertension fine now i want to see the category factor in terms of hypertension if mothers have hypertension then what is the proportion that the baby weight might be might we belong to low birth weight or normal birth weight so then column proportion will tell overall proportion will tell the total distribution of the data across the different categories that is row wise as well as column wise 
so it is up to the practitioner that what is the appropriate way because here my point is to focus that if mother has the problem of hypertension has some kind of issue of hypertension that what how many what is the proportion that we have observed in this data with babies with the low birth weight or normal birth weight here if you see 58.3 percentage of babies where the mothers have the hypertension so like this it, it, it based on the need of presentation either you can take column proportion or a row proportion or you can present overall proportion as well okay now uh, then we'll move uh, in defining a different thing that uh, suppose i have this is from data frame what and all we have done with the data frame how to present the same proportions how to compute the proportions of the data using a small matrix type that means you have already a contingency table in your hand okay then how to do compute proportions with that means first you have to define okay first you have to define i have uh, uh information relating to rural low medium high belong to rural semi urban and urban okay now this is the counts which i have noticed okay this is the counts this is the counts which i have noticed across each category of these uh two categorical variables now i am already we have seen in the yesterday's class how to define a matrix that 12 17 18 by row true what will happen each row after the number of rows is 3 means 3 into 3 columns are being defined that 12 7 18 11 10 19 9 15 9 12 so let us run this now my matrix is 12 i said no by row if we if we remove this what will happen that 12 7 18 instead of row it will come in a column 12 7 18 11 10 9 15 9 12 but now here we have added an argument added an argument that by row equal to true then what will I, then it executes in this way fine now i want to add row names instead of 1 comma 2 comma 3 or instead of this thing numerical headings i want to name them so there we have used row names of a is equal to c of uh, it's a vector of strings character functions so it should be given within double quotations so i'm giving that you now my a matrix will look like this so 12 people 12 members 12 members belong to low risk and they are pertaining to rural population something like this this is some arbitrary data what i have taken to present now from this also you can take prop dot table prop dot table of a prop dot table of a just simple okay when you have the, the uh, this uh, highlighted one is with respect to working with a data frame when you have already a cross tabulation okay ready made cross tabulation then define that cross tabulation using matrix function and define according to how you want to place the values just simply type prop dot table of a still you can restrict the decimals again just a quick, uh, quick review here that i want to have three decimals to run so this is the total proportions across each category across each category fine now we have we have uh, one more library called summary tools where it has for morning we have seen it has four functions that is freq that is for frequencies c table for cross tabulation disc for descriptive statistics df summary is for obtaining summary from a data frame okay now here you will be using 
sorry here you will be using uh, c table we have to give what will be on x that is row wise what will be on y okay for which we have to call library summary tools and then and then a c table is this okay now this is better presentation when compared to the earlier proportional tables now here we have count we have overall by default this c table will give us the row pr proportions by default if you don't add any other argument within the parentheses of c table it will give us the row proportions but if you want to add row proportion i mean total proportion you need to have one more argument that is one more argument called prop equal to so you see uh, prop when i type prop automatically the functions available related to the prop are displaying prop within double quotation t t stands for total proportions okay now this is the total proportion this is the total proportion if you want to call them proportion just replace t by c it will give you the column proportion okay so uh, for instance for the meantime i will take row proportions are by default okay but you want to have a total proportion you have to add an argument called prop equal to within double quotation t if it is a column you have to replace t by c okay now total proportions i don't want these headings cross tabulation column proportion low into weight data frame all these things so i can use a function called headings equal to false what i'll get i'll get just simple cross tabulation okay so like this you have multiple multiple things where you can in this very simple library of summary tools it has a very nice uh, arguments that are to be used okay now further we go with uh, one more function of this to display the frequencies of the category okay let me go with uh, race instead of low the low has only two categories race has three okay uh, for a frequency of race you see this frequency of race how many have come this is like almost like a space is output only frequency black 26 uh, 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 26 people are there other 67 white 96 are there now this is the column percentage valid cumulative total percentage and total cumulative i don't want all these things then what i do is i will report i don't want report dot nas is equal to false i don't want total column 100 100 totals is equal to false i don't want cumulatives the cumul is equal to false i don't want this heading so heading equal to false so when you use freq of lbd dollar race this much information will come but we can control whatever we can display whatever information we require i need only the categories of race the frequencies and the percentage of valid uh, percentage then the remaining thing like nas if there are no if there are nas this may be true okay if there are missing values in the data or nas in the data better to make it as a true here and you can remove the total by giving a logical operator called logical point that false and i don't want cumulatives as false and headings as false now what will this result this will result a small table just it contains the categories frequencies and percentage okay so this is 50.79 percentage of white people are 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 observed in this particular data of 189 mothers data okay so this is why and another way there are two to three things that we'll see and then we'll move to basic data visualization okay i'll take 5 to 10 minutes for this okay now there is one by statistics by st by is nothing but statistics by here what we have given list of this is a row this is for column across across the 
hypertension category morning also we have seen by function okay here function c table c table has become as an argument rather than a function in this st by okay now you see this seems to be more meaningful when compared to the previous and the morning sessions presentation that hypertension morning's uh, presentation was little clumsy okay and all the statistics is presented here if you see here again it is a row proportion okay here also we can convert that into column by prop, uh, i think proportion is equal to true okay now uh, one more thing is within the statistics by function apart from proportions we can we can uh, build i mean we can compute the statistics that is nothing but function disk disk is nothing but it will develop the descriptive statistics and the stat, stats is nothing but common okay now when we generate this it will give us first error message what is that error message this st by will not generate statistics for all the categorical variable so that's why with a full freedom we can call all the data set that i called lbd okay now group equal to low birth weight there are 59 babies with low birth weight their mean age is mother's mean age is 22.31 this is one kind of presentation where you have all variables okay all variables since uh, and coming to the normal weight here also age bwt lwt actually ftv and pt ptl or counted data discrete data okay that we can see and accordingly we can take the statistics and separately if you want to work with the disk function so this is way you have to use disk of lbd headings is equal to false statistics so if you remove if you remove just low what will happen it will be almost equal to the discrete function now see the same thing has come but only the previous exercise the previous exercise was across the category of the babies birth that is normal weight or uh, uh, normal weight or low birth weight data okay now from here after we start we start the let me close this and we'll take a new script okay i will let me clear thing here and uh, we'll start with the graphs now basic data visualization okay now let me start with this stuff lwt lwt not found why oh data is not recently okay data data we have to call because it is a new script we have to call the data all the data now oh, this will generate and w g sorry attach function see attach function attach of l b d now this program this is what we get so to generate a continuous histogram for a continuous variable a simple function is hist okay and box plot is just a box plot of lwt okay now what i have to do i want to see histogram sorry histogram and box plot side by side what i will to do partition of main frame into rows uh, uh, this is nothing but c of 1 comma 1 row two columns it's a two panel i am creating here now let me do this instead of this i can take with b birth weight of the baby this is the birth weight of the baby and this is the box plot of the same variable so in this like this we can uh, have a clear view that the distribution of the data okay the distribution of the data right let me uh, close the graphics okay next we'll move little ahead 
that let me do with histogram of BWP comma now when okay histogram of BWP this is the histogram I got okay okay and now this is the histogram we got with uh, the baby's birth weight now I want to have the X label Y label or the total uh, title of the graph then what I have to do is histogram call the variable to define the to define the x-axis label you have to use x lab okay you have to use x lab is equal to within double quotation baby's birth weight okay fine now I have I want to have a main title for this for which the argument is main within double quotation histogram of histogram of babies wait now enter see in the previous thing we had the variable name as as BWT and histogram of BWT by default but now this is histogram of B the baby's weight and baby's birth weight. Now I can still one more two thing we can do. If you see the axis of Y and the maximum peak is beyond the 40 which is displayed here. Now what I'll do is I'll try to increase the Y limit that is called Y. Y limit is equal to C of 0 to okay zero to let me make 60 because just i am giving 60 now because we know the range of the uh, baby's weight okay this is the frequency here this is the actual thing somewhere oh comma comma is not there that's why error has come okay now it got adjusted here let me make it to 50 i think so counts 50 counts yeah this is what we have seen now next thing is I want to display okay I want to display the exact counts in each class interval of this baby's birth weight variable how to do that to do that what we have to do is first we have to store this entire thing into one particular temporary variable let me take vv that is uh, for temporary variable okay now the entire histogram is shown here i mean uh, entire uh, total information is stored in vv now what we have to do is we have to use a, a function use a function like text of vv dollar mids that means it will create uh, mid values vv dollar counts labels is vv counts adjustment at the position of that particular point now we have executed this now we will execute this okay now see with this thing exactly corresponds to the middle value middle class interval of each class interval display the counts okay display the counts adjusted to the uh, i mean corresponding to each particular class interval so this is how in the previous way i mean just we had the histogram now we can add the data values corresponding to each class interval over the histogram right next okay next we will here okay now we will stop using this uh, uh, LBW data okay uh, for, for some more interesting understanding uh, let me clear up this some more interest understanding let me start taking one more data set which is widely used widely applied that is iris data set okay iris data set it has why we why we take most of the time this data set is it has some good features Okay, the sepal and sepal width, petal length and petal width are four important characteristics of that iris plant. Measuring those, I didn't uh, 
uh, four characteristics we can decide or we can identify to which kind of a subspecies of iris plant that plant belongs to okay now let me load the data here let me load the data data is loaded if you want to see what i said in the morning just click on this sp now you can see the data of this uh, iris data that is sepal and sepal with petal and petal with species setosa virginica and versicolor okay there are 150 samples 50 in each type of species okay 50 in each type of species let me close this now i am just connecting i am trying to get an access of all the variables to call for in future uh, coding aspect that's why i'm running attach function a simple thing is to do is that plot of plot of sepal length comma petal length okay let me see this sepal length plot is one function which will create a 2d scatter plot okay in previous data set we have used histogram and box plot now we will be generating a simple a simple scatter plot 2d scatter plot using plot okay now see this is the 2d scatter plot very basic very basic which doesn't have any kind of aesthetics that have been appended to this particular graph now one by one we will add the aesthetics now plot of sepal length comma petal length you should be very careful in defining the labels now i say pch is equal to pch is equal to 16 that's nothing but defining the pixel density okay what is the depth of that and then um, i can add color is equal to let us take blue normal colors are very easy like red blue green yellow brown that and all can be done so here we are adding two more arguments first argument is the pixel density dark i mean depiction of the pixel i mean data points and coloring that particular data points now see the change this is what we have got okay now still i'm not satisfied i need to add some more aesthetics for this particular graph because the appealing way to present the graph is all its with features now what we have to do i want to give because it is it has taken by default the variable name okay now sepal dot length instead of the sepal dot length and petal dot length petal dot length i can label them as let me copy this for uh, typo error and time okay let me type here that x lab is equal to sepal length here you can use space anything sepal length comma okay then y lab is equal to petal length okay then comma then i'm bringing here main is equal to main is equal to main is equal to what scatter plot of iris iris data and it should be every argument should be separated by comma that should be very careful that is important mandatory thing that every argument within the function within a function plot a scatter plot hist uh, any function you use it should be separated by comma now let, let us run this now we got this sepal length okay it is sepal length petal length and scatter plot of iris data with this thing okay now uh, this is the basic thing what we have thing but sometimes for presentation this frame may not be more appealing this what we can do is we can add frame frame 
is equal to sorry frame is equal to false okay now doing that what will happen see that the horizontal line according to the x axis and vertical line parallel to y axis got just erased okay see these are all small small points that for just better presentation and aesthetics of the graph okay now uh fine we will make use of we'll make use of this uh, density plots of because this uh, iris data has three species that is setosa virginica and versicolor let us have the densities of let us have the densities of that so for which what we do is what we do is i think uh, if i am able to share two screens parallelly that will be good okay okay now what i did is what i did is i am using i am using this uh, setosa virginica and versicolor as a labels for further graphical uh, presentation across the species i am defining them as a factor factor means it will take it will define this as as dot factor means i mean a uh, cat uh, ca ca characteristic which will support us as a as a categorical variable okay now once we do that once we do that simply you can say you can say okay i am using one more thing okay what is this sm dot density okay sorry sorry i have to call a library called sm library called sm okay sm is nothing but smoothing methods for a non parametric regression but we are using uh, to have a smooth densities of three different species for the variable sepal length okay for which we are using a library in general you may raise a question that in general why can't can't we use can't we uh, generate the density uh, just without any library we can but it will take uh, four to five lines of a code or five to six it will lead to multiple lines of a code to generate because we have to take the mean and stand minimum maximum then create a breaks then calculate the mean and spread across the uh data points then it will take four to five lines of a code instead when we use library uh, library sm and there has a function called sm smooth dot density and compare compare because because we are having different three different species types okay now we have called the library sm okay and then sm dot density this is what we get this is what we get okay so now see but still this is not that clear which uh, uh, this density belongs to which species type is it versicolor or setosa or virginica i don't know so for which you have a small uh, uh, two lines okay the two lines are this will tell us the title distribution of sepal length across the thing and these two lines will enable us to add legend manually by using the cursor now just you see when i run this okay here i don't see any because cursor is always like a selection but when i bring the cursor to the graphical point it converts into a plus symbol that means here it is a called legend locator 1 so this will indicate that just to make a click of a mouse then there the legend will get displayed okay shall we do that again so first what we have to do first we have to generate the densities then give the title then uh, define the labels for the position now see if you see this still the activation is not over that's why it is in execution mode once i press this okay here automatically the execution will be turned off so this will tell us to 
the red color is nothing but the distribution of setosa it is almost symmetric and virginica is green this is the dotted line here and uh, Versi color is blue, which is in the middle between of these two, uh, green and pink. Okay, but now if you want to have all four variables are there. If you want to have four variables to uh, to display in one panel, what to do? I want to split the panel using par mf row is equal to c of 2 comma 2 i have four variables so 2 by 2 matrix will get generated okay let me copy all the concepts here lines present it here do it one more time do it one more time do it one more time now why i have taken these many times is i have four variables i have copied the same thing four times but just I will change here sepal length instead of sepal length I take sepal width okay here also I can change it as a sepal width this will minimize your uh, minimize your uh, typo errors actually so here I can go with petal petal width okay petal length is over right so sepal length sepal width is over now I go with petal length and petal width. Okay. Now here it is petal width. Okay. All the four variables have come. Okay. These two lines won't change because the iris SP contains the factors. Now let us see what will happen by running all these things. First we have to start from here. Okay, now run the code. See, the first portion, first cell has taken for sepal length. Now the title of sepal length has come. Now we have to keep the label, then move further. That is okay. Then one more thing. Let's keep it here. I think when we maximize that will come automatically adjust to the Okay Are you able to see this when I maximize it this are you able to see this right hopefully Now this is the distribution of all the things. This is one variety when presenting the densities uh, we have a smoothing function is only to present the densities without any shaded region along with the label okay but we uh, tomorrow we'll see the what we call this uh, grammar of gallery gg graphs gg plot g galley and different different r libraries particularly for graphics will be used tomorrow for better presentation okay now here my attempt is to make you aware that how we can generate densities when we have multiple categories of the data okay now how to construct the box plot how to construct the box plot so morning we have seen right very simple to see that how to construct the box plot here let me clear this here I'm using partitioning the frame into one comma three. Okay. One comma three because a yeah, box plot of SP here, left hand side, I'm I'm allowing all 150 rows. Okay. And I'm eliminate I'm removing the fifth column. What is the fifth column? Fifth column is your uh, to remove the fifth column for further operations in R, we have to use minus five or minus symbol as a prefix to the column number minus symbol to the prefix to the column number so sp uh, minus 5 will display the 
box plot of this particular thing. Okay, so if you see this, this is yeah, one minute, one minute. So here, if you see this, uh, this is the distribution of petal length. This is the box plot of petal, this is petal width and this is petal length. Now sepal width is this and petal sepal length is this. Okay, now look at the media position, position of each variable. What is the position of each variable? Which variable has the median utmost center? Sepal length. Okay. This is purely <clears throat> left skewed. You can see this. If I make a density overlay here, and it will be left skewed. Okay. And this is slightly right skewed, having some three to four observations with extreme uh, beyond the uh, limits of the whiskers. This is called whiskers. Dotted uh, horizontal and vertical line is called whiskers. Okay. Now, even petal width is also slightly left skewed. Okay. So, now, this graphical presentation is, is without the subspecies of the iris data. Now, <coughs> if I want to present the same, okay, coloring, coloring also we'll see. Okay, coloring is, we have seen this, we have to use this color function, C of blue comma, red comma, steel blue and yellow. I have used four different colors and the rest of the code remains same. Box of SP, minus 5, horizontal true, main iris species data, the same. Whatever we have done in the previous step, that is same. Just only additional argument is the color. So like this, it will get color distinction uh, uh, will be there. Now, building box plot for each variable across the categories of the iris data. That means, here we have done for all the variables, but next what we do is we create the box plot for sepal length alone. This module operator is nothing but construct the box plot using sepal length variable across the species of the iris and where the data, data should be called from SP, horizontal is true. Horizontal means data will be like, I mean, yeah, uh, box plots will be horizontally displayed and main is iris part, uh, iris species data and color is this. Since there are three species, we have to give three colors. What is the change from the previous step to this step? In the previous step, all the variables are considered but not the species type. Here, only change what we have noticed is two arguments. What are the two arguments? Data is called separately because we are willing to, we are planning to construct the box plot using a one particular variable across three different species, okay? <coughs> that is the uh, uh, change here from the previous line to the next line. Now, so this is the distribution of sepal length across three species of setosa, versicolor, and virginica. Okay, now what we are witnessing here, what we are observing here, the average sepal length value is, is observed to be at the larger, higher value in versicolor species than the other setos to setosa and virginica. This is the median, right? <clears throat> the median is at the higher level, that is around 6.5. And this is around 5.9 and this is around 5. So this is one indication that if you want, to, if you get a new plant of iris, if you measure the sepal length, if it comes nearer to the on an average of 5 or more or less 5.7 or 4.5 within this confidence interval, then I, this, this, is, uh, this will enable us to understand that this plant which we found of belongs to setosa type of iris uh, data, okay? Now, 
I want to see all these things, like because we have four variables, I want to see median difference across each variable with respect to each species. Then again, what we have to do, we have to present this with the four different variables. What are the four different variables? That is sepal and sepal width and petal length and petal width. So what we have to do the change here is this is nothing but it's a sepal, it's a sepal width. Okay. Sepal width here it is petal length. Here it is petal width. Okay. But above that, above that, again do this partition if you require. But I want to show all the four graphs in one stretch. So two comma two. I'm doing that. Box plot. This thing. Fine. Now look at this. Look at now focus only on the median. I mean the middle uh, uh, quantile two. There's Q2 in all the graphs. First graph. Setosa has very less median value compared to Virginica and Versicolor. When com in coming to sepal width, Setosa is is little higher value, uh, possessing higher median sepal width value when compared to the Virginica and Versicolor. Now look at the other two, petal length and petal width. So it has very peculiar species of iris that except the sepal width, except the sepal width, the remaining characteristics are, are quite smaller when compared to Virginica and Versicolor. Okay, now whereas if you see the other counterpart, look at the uh, uh, Versicolor plant, Versicolor species, the average sepal length is higher, average petal length is higher, average petal width is higher, but it is a moderate, it is having a moderate sepal width. So it's a pure contrast. It is a pure contrast between the set, uh, sepal and I mean setosa plant species and versicolor species. Setosa, except in sepal width, the remaining characteristics it possesses smaller average. I mean smaller uh, measurements. Okay. Whereas in versicolor, except in except in this uh, sepal width. The remaining parameters like sepal and petal and petal width it attains a higher values of uh, the lens. Okay, now only the ambiguity comes that how to classify, how to observe because the median values of this Virginica and Versicolor are very close by in this sepal width and sepal length. So this creates one curiosity to know that how to classify. Actually, this iris data is a classification. Mm, problem okay given certain measurements how best you can identify and allocate that this plant belongs to setosa species or this plant belongs to virginica or this plant belongs to versicolor now when we do that kind of a classification problem okay setosa plants can easily be identified because except in sepal but the remaining characteristic they are very small okay measurements are small but only the small, uh, slighter ambiguity comes with versicolor and virginica, particularly with sepal length and petal, uh, sepal length and sepal width. Okay, fine. Now, uh, so these are all some what we say we have seen histogram, scatter plot, box plot. Okay, <coughs> these are all the basic data presentations for across univariate and univariate across different categories. Okay, so I stop the presentation now. I stop the presentation now, and uh, to, we'll uh, give the scope for, we'll give the scope for questions. Wait a minute, it's taking time because we have loaded let me do graphics dot off if you take okay. 
see this. Okay, just taking time, one minute. Okay, so uh, on the whole, a summary is that how to build a histogram, how to add x-axis labels and giving main title, how to color the histogram, okay, and then how to define box plots for each and every variable, okay, and then how to define a simple scatter plot using two, uh, a 2D uh, uh, coordinate axis. Okay, so this is that is what we call basic graphs. Okay, so most of the time, most of the time for any data visualization, we use majorly, major, majorly the histogram, uh, box plot, and uh, scatter plot. Okay, but there are some other additional uh, uh, things that are to be focused. Is that how to create a 3D histogram, a 3D histogram and 3D scatter plot? Okay and uh, what actually they mean for and how to generate overlaying histograms what is the purpose behind that that and all will be addressed okay it's taking multiple time it's one time just taking Okay, now it is up to the floor, I mean, the participants. If you have any questions, you can rise. Uh, if not, uh, Iris data is available. Iris data is available. One minute, one minute. Any questions if you have? Maybe from my side, I got a message that internet connection is not stable. At that time, you might have missed your, I mean, my voice. Okay. Uh, okay, fine. I will do that. Uh, please show the full code at one time. Okay. Then box plot minus pi. You see, you should uh, the box plot square parenthesis comma minus pi is nothing but to remove i mean just to present the box plot using the continuous variable not that fifth column variable that is fifth column has the categories okay so uh, generally box plot is built for continuous variables even histogram scatter plot box plot these are all used for continuous type of variables and for categorical variables uh, like uh, this uh, hypertension smoking race species type all these things uh, for all these categorical variables, uh, we have to use bar plot or pie diagram. Okay, so since we want to present the uh, the box plot of sepal and sepal width and petal length and petal width uh, uh, using only four variables and not the categorical information, that's why we have made minus pi. Minus pi is nothing but while constructing, while generating box plot remove the categorical column and then build but in later uh, codes what we have done we have we have used that uh, species as a factor and then built uh, using sepal dot length tilde operator that is modular operator across the species type okay and then there is one question if you have more than one sheet in excel workbook how to use the relevant one uh, that also i'm facing let me rectify it tomorrow i'll tell you Okay. Iris data is available. Okay, online already. Tomorrow session, I will show you. I will show you. <clears throat> Tomorrow session starts with the three D data visualization, and in the afternoon session, um, it is about introduction to hypothesis testing. LBD data, there is separate website. Uh, I let you know. 
okay because long time back i have downloaded it i'll let you know that thank you how can we draw ogive curve ogive curve is nothing but frequency curves okay uh, i'll try sir i've not done it let me i'll i'll show you tomorrow morning ogive curve i will note it down you can list library of datarium library of datarium it will display the total count and uh, uh, what do you say this uh, how we know the how many data sets in r the library datarium the libraries no no data sets no okay uh, how many data library datarium will tell how many data sets are there in that particular library and then it will display the data set names can you tell can you tell the list of libraries you have used today we have used a site package we have used sm library okay we have used uh, what is we have used describe sorry we have used this uh, uh, summary tools package okay all these things we have used this c table frequency description are all are observed with summary tools package okay and uh, sm is for density curves i think scikit package scikit package we have used yeah scikit package also we have used anything else okay regarding feedback you can ask the organizers i am not uh, that is my out of my boundary okay so now let me show you one thing so you are asking about tomorrow session the tomorrow morning so what we have completed is this we have completed the basic things okay now tomorrow we'll go with the 3d data visualization and introduction to hypothesis testing where we deal with one sample t test two sample t test and um, page sample with the blend of this also chi square test also okay so we will before that we'll understand what is the hypothetical framework what is the significance of p value okay that and all we will try to do okay any more questions can you explain factor analysis during this any session no as of now because factor analysis is at the multivariate level uh, the main target audience what i was told is the graduate students okay uh, to expect to do the factor analysis first we have to understand principal component analysis okay so uh, that will be a little higher level for the graduates okay then do we get our script which used in any workshop in this workshop you are asking to rupa pavan kumar okay this uh, scripts also will be shared i already said in the morning that <coughs> whatever the codes available in different different text format or uh, different websites different documents i have used it to present this i have just i have just uh, changed according to my quest requirement of that particular data set my attempt here is to show how best we can explore the data what we have at hand okay from data to data uh, this may vary okay when i list data either it is only single categorical variable when i get some other data like uh, stat log hot data set is also there wisconsin breast cancer data is also there it has multiple categorical variables multiple uh, continuous variables are there then what best we can make use of that particular data set to present it in a meaningful manner so the codes the functions remain same i mean the libraries functions remain same but how you take how you want to present this particular how you want to make use of the categorical and way Uh, continuous variables to bring out this kind of a graph is purely it is your intuition for example i want to have a two overlaying density plots across the species of iris then i should start observing how to create a overlaying density the r code for overlaying density okay uh does there exist does there exist uh, any relationship between histogram and regression curve okay in one sense it is related 
because in regression we have an assumption of normality okay if it is simple regression or a multivariate normality when it comes to multivariate normality histogram doesn't support but in comes to univariate the variable uh, x over y when x is normally distributed then automatically it will have a good impact on having the proper day but estimation of y values y cap values so in one extent testing the assumption part in testing the assumption part the histogram has a limited portion okay explain about the error what is that error i didn't get amar tiwari you mean talking about regression error error term in regression or uh, what actually it is a general question question is too general okay i create data by questionnaires answering option point results get from the secretary okay <coughs> that's a good data then that's a primary data what we call when we generate the data from the different parts of the total geography topography of where you are circulated the day questioner so the such kind of a likert scaling whatever thing all can be defined as a uh, character variables or a string variables and there we can play around with that particular thing sir uh, i can tell one thing that if you tell me the i mean in general if i address this it may not be clear but if you want to display that particular age group of this if you are in the age group of this okay if you have been the age group and then you want to see the response across the likert scale question then we can do that using c table okay like this uh, if you raise questions from your data set accordingly one we can i can create the codes related to your question to give out your give out your uh, requirement okay what is the use of box plot box plot has multiple uses the first way is to check the normality okay the first way is to check the normality okay the second is observation of outliers okay the third is to see whether the data is right skewed or left skewed how many i mean to what proportion of observations are extended to uh, having more uh, elongated tail on the right side left side something like that uh, and it is yeah these are all the purposes of the box plot it is a five point summary which will talk about q1 q2 q3 uh, lower uh, interval and upper interval which is this lower interval and upper interval are generated using this interquartile range is there cluster analysis session in r no in this session we don't cover cluster analysis the questions related to factor cluster discriminant analysis logistic regression higher end um, uh, higher end uh, what do you say this uh, higher end statistical methods are not covered because the total syllabus for this 6 day webinar is kept in mind of the graduate students or first year msc statistics or at least msc statistics people so that they can have a recollections of the theory what they have read what is the use of whiskers whiskers will tell will build the confidence interval okay mean when we have a, in statistics we say uh, mean doesn't give much information we need to have the boundary points so that if any data point is beyond that boundary then that boundary clear uh, that boundary will uh, tell us the dead data point is outlier which is unusual observations of the total pattern of the data what actually it is okay and then sir what box plot means i just now i explain box plot just now i explain okay right any more questions then then we can we'll meet tomorrow at 10:30 where we will discuss 3d histogram i mean 3d data visualization okay nice presentation explain tomorrow chi square uh, keeping yes i am doing that i am doing that keeping in view of the ug students only 
I'm trying to provoke their minds that how best we can uh, we can uh, make them understand that how best we can use the data. In what way we should look the data, in what way we have to tackle the data, that is my uh, hidden uh, objective of this particular presentation. Okay. Anyway, thank you for that. And the polynomial regression fitting polynomial, let me try to do that. Maybe second order polynomial I'll try to do. Okay, that can be entertained because they might have done curve fitting with exponential power, all these things. Let me show you uh, one important aspect of uh, nonlinear regression also. Graph and data processing, which software? The question is to general life sciences. See, uh, any, any kind of a data, any kind of a data can be, uh, see data is different discipline is the statistics is thing the existing statistical methods can be applied to any sort of the data okay in excel sorry can you make the question very clear uh, you are writing the question in a piece wise like please graph and data processing which software life sciences excel we use in excel also we can do okay in excel also we can do PCH is to uh, in, in, improve the increase the intensity of the data point. Okay, PCH is to increase the intensity of the data point. That's it. I am not getting your question, Dr. Ahmed. Please share in class. He's asking about. Uh, software license, life science, and all this thing. You can write to me. You can write to me, Ahmad. Whatever you have, I can. I'll try to do because right now, your questions are in a very uh, parts. Parts are there. I'm not able to uh, understand your question. You are asking to share in class again. You are asking, please graph and data present processing. Anyway, you can write to me. Hope you have the email ID. Morning, I have shared. Yesterday also, I have shared. Okay. If no other questions are there, we can wind up this evening session. Tomorrow by sharp 10.30, we'll meet you again. Okay. Tomorrow we'll meet you by 10.30. Okay. Bye.